Low thunder. The slow kill of a darkling moon. The strange fruit of the dreaming stars. The echo rumbling. The prophet voice of low thunder. The distance that carries the spirit dream songs of three peoples. Indigenous nations. Those acknowledged as first blood-born inhabitants upon Turtle Island. Red Earth. Her songs and signs inscribed upon their hearts. So it is said. So it is heard. So it shall be the DNA legacy of our old ones buried within our flesh of inheritance in fire and ice. Bold impact, arrogant theft. The aftermath is a storm that sheds no willing grace, no preferred means of life, no freedom of gift nor giving. No rainfall. And as an offshoot vents below itself the slow kill of a darkling moon buried beneath water, which blows into gas-formed air pockets, takes on aspects of a roiling evolution foaming into being as bone-fed monsters of a sadness never-ending. The flesh of the dead who accepted and signed for promised treaty agreements. Their bones and flesh sung over and laid down long ago. Their blessing the fruition of sleep, a first nation of dreaming skill. Blessed and lowered with reverence by the thunder of human beings, the Mandan Hidat in Arekara, three as if one. People now rent and shed of blood and humanity. Now vested with the kill of lowering thunder. And its gunpowder scent, the blasting cap death knell, and a birth of a project, a dam project, the garrison dam project of the 1940s. You, pale and hollow, remember those 40s, don't you? Yea, the slow kill of a darkling moon and its rise upon the interest of the Corps of Army Engineers, the gunpowder scorching of a deconstruction building storm. Houses moved in the middle of dinners, families served with no warning, a theft of ground before government approval. The arrogance of the ignorant saying, oh yeah, we're moving your house. Where do you want it? And the slow thunder of earth movers becomes the internal bleeding of these peoples, these three affiliated tribes. Allies of Confederacy, yea and yea, whispers from this darkling moon, three sings for these First Nations and twenty others now bleeding away in spirit in an external eternal spent expanse of aftermath. The tides of supposed man-saved waters swirling, grappling, captivated by concrete and eschewed as to be the strangest of fruit of the dreaming star. This becomes the slow feed and raw stream of death, 
trickling from the mouth and broken teeth of a prophet, old in his inarticulations, the lowering boom of thunder, the crisp, thin cries of those who have already died, and thousand times and those who have been born without their ancestral connections in place. The ancient crucial umbilical cords buried beneath a small inland sea 600 feet down. Beneath the crowning face of Shakakawea the lifeline to that ancientness buried, severed. Yea, the raising of the dead is always possible, yeah? Voices crackle and fade, confusion reigns, chaos is king. As down the halls of buried men and women who yet weep with newspaper print and red ink as someone of the younger typeset generation speaks to say, if you wish to see the reality of this debacle, if you wish to view the real casualties of the flood, don't look too broadly nor nationally. Don't look at the blood-fresh maggots feeding upon Capitol Hill because there is no evidence where you will find ground down to meal lives issued from fine and refined bones the results of deplorable conditions U.S. government made. Red Earth, Twined, and Otherwise are in the obituaries of local news with local ties to their local communities. Tied to their local deathbed upon a place with placemat, a communal grave. Carved from a hunger, government-issued, stamped with the steel plate of the Army Corps of Engineers. Red Earth people forced now to walk on the waters of dead faith dipped into the sick light of darkness in the limed profile boldness of a darkling moon. Their Red Earth heart rate matching the slow words of low thunder. And if you, others, were to listen with the mud cakes removed from your minds, from your eyes, from your ears, you would see the flood. You would know what has happened here. You would hear and be forced to confess to this monstrosity of your bright line misdeeds. You buried our lands beneath water. You buried thus the songs of our old ones beneath blood waters. You buried our world beneath your man-made waves, your water saved. These man-made waves of a small inland sea. You crushed our houses, those not moved. You destroyed our crops and gardens and healing plants, decimated our livelihoods, stock, horses, cattle, chickens, on and on and on. In effect, you buried our bonds to the sacred, that which we call Wonkaji. 
our sacred trust. Some of our old and some of our young have since returned to these saved waters, gone down, interred, returned to that place of burial. And so as if a dream, as if to show the end, a last glimmer of that legacy and its darkling moon, the fruit of our estranged stars. The beginning that keeps repeating from the 40s and the 50s, a birth date of sorts, or perhaps a birth of death, heartache and the continued loss from the flood. There is a scene of mockery and the sad, steely laughter of what might be an example of futile fearlessness. This is one legacy of this man-made lake. Three red earth peoples, small inland sea, some 600 feet in depth, an image in part by a name blown from Africa. The name of an animal wild and free upon the savanna, the name now of a car, an automobile. Last thing to be seen with a sense of Average recognition, its profile stamped into metal, stamped into a word, stamped into what has become a gross national product, impaled with greed, screaming of itself for itself. An image impala, implicating its exile by Chevy, by American. Fancy dancers, fresh from a powwow, still in paint feathers and regalia, speed rendering them to little more than moving blurs of color in motion. The policemen clocked them at 100 miles plus, but their century of movement was faster stronger and able to endure the turning clock as they spun and pinwheeled between earth, wind, and sky. They were becoming drum spirits, singing, fearless, singeing off the dark shadows smudged across their sun, moving towards the east their last grace of signs, a burst of speed, as if an impala from the bush before a leopard. Yea, their dust dance on old Highway Road 8 could be seen from far away. As in a sudden sharp twist, their Chevy Impala tilted away from gravity and the loosened road that curved and dipped below water, their feathers in the paint of taillights disappeared down. With that highway into the bowels of the flood waters, still singing, still drumming. The policeman commenting on his report, saying, that's the last we'll see of them. They've gone back to Elbow Woods. Yea and yea, let's commemorate the small inland sea, Sakakawea, with the drowning efforts of three peoples, these saved waters lapping at the edges of the voice prophetic unto death, for most that which becomes theirs.